a very cheap power over Ethernet adapter. The idea of this is that you plug it into a socket. It's available in various pin configurations. Uh, universal voltage, uh, 100 to 240 volt. Yes, it is. And the idea is that you've got two network ports in this and you take your uh, local area network and you plug it into here and the power over Ethernet comes from here and it doesn't just carry the data but it actually carries power as well. So let's get the sponger into this. I don't see any screws. It claims to be rated 4 to 8 volts at half an amp. That would be 24 watts. Is it heavy enough for that? It could be. I'm more interested in seeing what the electrical separation is like. So how is this going to come apart is the question. Am I going to have to stick it into a vise or tap it gently with a hammer? I can see it trying to part, but it does. Is it glued? I may have to pause because it doesn't look like it's going to come apart very easily. No, this looks as though it's going to take a bit. One moment, please. I have used the force. So that was clipped together very tightly. No glue as far as I can see, but it does have the little lips that uh, make it much harder to separate. So the spudger was going to have a hard time. Here's a foam pad that is primarily intended to shove the circuit board in there. I mean, it looks quite nice so far. With modest separation, that is not that it's just failed right there with that tiny little capacitor and the closeness. The, the, it's not just a tiny capacitor, but they've got the track's really close. But anyway, uh, I shall take a picture of this and we can explore the circuitry. One moment, please. OK, let's explore and then we'll unwind this transformer. I've already taken the outer layer off because it was really well stuck down. And so far, so good. That is a weakness, though, that class Y capacitor, because it isn't a class Y capacitor. It's the classic 2.2 nanofarad 1 kV rated, but it's not really suitable for connection between uh, the mains voltage side and the low voltage side that people could come in contact with. So we start off on this side of the circuitry with a 4.7 ohm fusible resistor. The class X capacitor has been emitted. The common mode suppression choke has been emitted. Um, and there is a rectifier in the back which uh, charges this capacitor. Did I note that capacitor value down? It's 15 microfarad. 15 microfarad. 400 volts. The chip they're using is CIC7224, quite a capable chip. It's rated 18 watts. The 18 watts is not quite the 24 watts that they're quoting at 48 volts, half an amp. So... It's going in the right direction, but it's not there, and uh, the transformer is quite chunky, to be fair. We have opto-isolation feedback, uh, a little power supply capacitor for this chip here. It derives its own supply internally, though. We've got a fast recovery diode, not short key, but fast recovery diode on the secondary, and the schematic shows uh, two capacitors, but with an inductor between them, but in this case, they've just got the two capacitors and then the connectors, and a little cheeky little blue LED down here poking out. Um, other things worth mentioning this side, uh, this is part of the snubber network, because otherwise, you know, it's not a bad design, really. Let's take a look at the back of the circuit board, which has a lot more components on it. I have flipped the image so everything tallies up. You can see where they've effectively bridged out the com mode suppression choke there and just omitted the pad for the uh, Class X2 capacitor, even though the hole's there for it. How bizarre. So there is the snubber network across the coil. There's the chip. It's got a little extra capacitor across it. Don't know the value of that. Um, there's its little power supply. And there's the opto isolator. There's the dubious capacitor. They've also got the option to have wider pads for a proper class XY capacitor. That's really annoying. Oh, and there's the rectifier. Um, on the secondary side, we've got the secondary winding. We've got the diode going across. And then we've got a classic TL431 uh, uh, voltage threshold detector which is being used as a sort of effectively almost like a shunt regulator to power the LED on inside this LED. Um, and then the output, and this is the interesting bit, The imagine the pink is green, it's a green circuit board, so I couldn't really colour these in green, but that's the green pair, 
and that's the orange pair. That's the, your, your data coming in before it goes out to have the power added. And here it is, it's just looped across, and then it has the power added on in two pins on uh, the... Now, here's the odd thing, right? This is a Wikipedia bit of data about these, about the standards and the uh, the really annoying two different standards for connecting these cables the, that just literally swap the... Uh, the green and orange pairs. I don't know why they do that. But they've got the blue is used for power and the brown is used for power. I would have used brown positive, but they've actually used that negative and the blue positive. I guess they just chose an arbitrary pair. Also, blue is right in the middle uh, of the uh, connector. Maybe that's to do with swapping polarities. Not really sure. When If you get the connector terminated wrong... I'm not really sure because that put 48 volts on the little transformer, which wouldn't probably end well. Um, but I can show you the schematic for this because they have followed more or less. I'll just bring this in. In fact, I'll just have to zoom to fit. It has been zoomed to fit. Um, so I've based, they've basically followed most of this. But because this is a higher voltage, there is a deviation from that, that the feed down to the opto-isolator circuitry, just to take the stress off the little TL431, is via a resistor and a 22 volt zener diode, just to drop, remove the dissipation away from this little chip here, because it effectively has to light that LED. Um, other than that, uh, there's the potential divider that sets the threshold voltage on here, about 2.5 volt. And uh, a few resistors missing, and this capacitor just connects directly across the regulator. And there's that sneaky little fake class Y capacitor. The uh, LED, the blue LED, obviously, because it's very high tech, has a 15K resistor in series with it, giving a uh, current through the LED of 3 milliamps when the 48 volts is present. Okay, now it's time to change the setup a little bit and we'll unwind this transformer and see if it reveals any dark secrets. One moment, please. Okay, so this transformer does not have a feedback winding. It's strictly two layers of primary on either side of the secondary. And going by the first layer of primary here that we're seeing on the outside, it is staying well clear of the point that the low voltage connections go across. Hopefully that will be maintained. If we unwind this, let's see how many turns there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20. Okay. Radio, 20 turns. And we're going to get another one. 21 turns, roughly. Okay, so that's the that one off. And then we've got a layer of insulation tape between the that connection, the that layer of the winding, and the low voltage. Uh, now, is this tape just a creased here, or is this actually going to come up? The tape was put on very, very tightly. So this is the insulation between you and certain death. So let's unwind this. And the secondary is wound right up to... I'm guessing that's a secondary there. Let's uh, Let's unwind it. So where is that? Going up. Excuse me. Going off shot there slightly. So, not sure which end of the second is the best one to lift, but to be honest, from what I'm seeing at the moment now, see how the secondary is wound right up to there? And that little wire there is the mains voltage side. That's part of the primary. I was hoping they'd have kept the, the secondary in the middle because that would actually have given them a decent level of isolation. But where they've actually run that in that uh, does not comply with my standards. Okay, I'll uh, count number of turns on this anyway, if I can get this off. It's uh, very going to be very fumbly because it really is. They've, because I guess ultimately it's 48 volts. It's quite a high voltage. They've had quite a high number of turns. 
let's say I can faff this and completely mess up completely, which I am. So that is not easy to get out. Uh, one moment, please. Okay, let's see how this goes. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. Does this almost have 44? Let's say 45. Uh, that, that's a lot of turns for... Uh, the secondary. Right, tell you what, I'm going to have to try and get that bit of tape off. But now that we've pe peeled that back, you can see it was right up against that little wire down there, which isn't great. Right, just give me a second. I'm going to pause while I try and find the end of the tape because it took ages last time. Okay, I've found it. You know, this is another of these products that they've skimped in the most stupid places that they could have just made this a completely safe product, but they've violated the electrical separation in so many ways. Well, two ways. Just two. If they'd wound the secondary just a bit further in, or used the double insulated uh, wire, which would have made it a lot thicker, or brought in at least a bit of sleeving to actually try and keep it away from where it came across that. But they've not done that. That and the, the ridiculously cheaped out class Y capacitor. It just gets annoying when they do stuff like that. But then hi, who am I? Um, let's see if we can find the end of this. So, yeah, maybe I, I came back too soon here <laughs> because uh, this rat tail, let's uh, see if it's going to unwind from this direction. It might not unwind from this direction. No, it doesn't want to unwind from that direction. Nope. So it's going to have to be from the other side. Uh, right, hold on. <laughs> this is tiny. One moment, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Uh, I'm going to pause. Hold on. 66, 67, 68, 69. Okay, right here. Um, so we'll see about 70 on the inner layer. So the question is, this doesn't need f accurate feedback because the feedback's coming via the optoisolator. So why then, why don't they just ultimately just wind it as two layers? And that would make it a lot easier actually putting the sleeving on as well. I don't know why they do it that way. But anyway, there we have it. Uh, if you plugged uh, something into this and uh, had it on the network, say for instance it was a, an outdoor camera that was getting its power over the power over Ethernet, and then you climbed a metal ladder and it was raining outside because the CCTV wasn't working, you grabbed hold of the camera with a metal case. If it was in any way grounded to the actual uh incoming the supply from this unit, there is a risk that if the insulation was uh, defective in this because you can't guarantee where you've got basically bits of copper wire just passing right over each other, you can't guarantee that's good insulation. Uh, the risk is that you could get a shock. So I don't think this would uh, pass uh, UK electrical regulations or American or European or anything like that. It, why do they make them? It's just silly stuff. A little bit more time, the transformer, um, and that proper capacitor, 
um, a bit of filtering there would have added a bit more, but not super crit- critical. But uh, but that's it. That's how they've done it. Strange. That would be why it's being sold super cheap. Two pounds for this, by the way, from AliExpress. But having said that, I'll give you a link if you want, but I don't actually recommend using them because of that slight risk of insulation breakdown and the risk of a shock. <laughs> 